Hey guys, what is up? It is the Fast Break Report here bringing you guys another vlog. So I wanted to talk about a team that I haven't talked about in a very long time. And I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on them for just how good they could be. I feel like they're another surprise team in the East. There's a couple teams that I feel like pe people are kind of sleeping on. One of them, it, it, I only have one team in the West I think people are sleeping on. But it, it's just the idea. I want to talk about this team because I'm very interested to see how they're going to play this year. And that is the Toronto Raptors. Um, I, I'm going to be honest. I owe, our, I owe Raptors fans an apology because I made a video about Pascal Siakam that was kind of a hot take. You know, I, I said that he wasn't getting... You know, he was getting paid more than he was worth. And I looked at it because I'm like, the guy's only made one all-star team and he's getting paid, you know, four years, $136 million. And then once I, you know, obviously last year he made all NBA third team and played very well. I think when you play that good and only make NBA third team, like, you know, there's... It's a, it's a tough league to be in, you know, right now especially. So, you know, when I see guys like John ja Morant making all NBA second team, I'm just like, and he he should have been higher in MVP voting. I'm just thinking to myself, okay, you know what? Maybe I was a little harsh on that because I look at guys like Tobias Harris, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and I, I'm just like, okay, I can justify Pascal Siakam's contract now. But um, the Toronto Raptors got better in the off season and. They're a team that I think could win 53, 54, maybe 55 games this upcoming season. And I know that sounds like a stretch, but the Toronto Raptors lock motherfuckers up. I, I don't know what to tell you guys. I mean, Scotty Barnes, right, wins rookie of the year. Shot 49% from the field last year, 30% from three. If Scotty Barnes can take his three-point percentage up to like 33, 34%, it's serviceable, right? Like, that's that's serviceable. You can do something with that. And I'd argue that's the weakest part of Scotty Barnes' game, is just the idea that he doesn't shoot threes consistently, you know? And we saw games last year where it's like, if he takes seven threes a game, right, he's capable of making four or five of them. You know, there were games last year where Scotty Barnes showed that, like, yeah, I can hit I can hit threes, okay? He averaged about 15, almost 15 and a half points a game. You know, like, Scotty Barnes is going to be a very, very big piece for Toronto going forward, and I think he's only going to continue to get better. You got Pascal Siakam, who they're going to have for a full season this year. Um, you know, he, he sat out the beginning of uh, the first couple games, I guess, like the first quarter of uh, last season, right? And OG Ananobi, hopefully, plays more than 48 games this year. You know, I look at this roster, and I'm just like, they got the shooting, and they got the defense, and a lot of teams are just writing them off, like, oh, Toronto's gonna be a, a, a seventh or eighth te uh, seed team, or, you know, I've even seen takes where people say Toronto's gonna be a playing team, and I'm like, nah, -uh, they're not gonna be a playing team, I'm telling you that now, they will have a better record than the Chicago Bulls, okay, I'm gonna tell you that right now, Toronto is definitely going to have a better record than the Chicago Bulls, and when I look at this roster, Fred Van Vliet is consistently one of the top point guards in the league. I mean, Fred Van, v Fred Van Vliet last year was, I think, in top top five point guards in the league. Um, Pascal Siakam is arguably the best player at his position, arguably. I mean, there's Giannis, but, you know, I'm saying, like, Pascal Siakam is, for his position, is one of the better players at his position, right? I, you can make a case for Anthony Davis, but, like, Pascal Siakam can do a little bit of everything, and he plays the four, and he's a very good defender. You've got, um, who else? Gary Trent Jr. who can shoot the lights out, right? Like, there's a lot of guys on this team that are capable of playing defense and just sh shooting the lights out. They picked up Otto Porter Jr. in the offseason. They have Thaddeus Young, who's not only a great vet, but a solid NBA player. Like, he doesn't do anything super amazing, but he's a very good veteran leader, and he get he tries. You know what I'm saying? Thaddeus Young tries, and that's, that's the good thing about him. He's an effort. He's basically an effort player. And they just re-signed, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna say his name wrong, but I don't care. They, I, they re-signed Chris Boucher in the offseason, who, la I, I think, uh, two years ago, when he played 60 games or whatever, he shot like 38% from three and averaged almost two blocks a game with, on, on nine and six. You know what I'm saying? So, so he's a career 78% free throw shooter. So, I just think to myself, Chris Boucher, the shooting potential is there, Right? They have Precious Archua, who some people even have as a candidate for most improved player of the year. I mean, like, 
They're, they have some depth, okay? They added DJ Augustine as well, who, I, I mean, it, I get it, it's DJ Augustine, but they signed Josh Jackson, who, Josh Jackson is a very good defender. He's not a great offensive player, but he's a solid defender. I mean, like, I'm just keeping it a buck, man. Toronto, when they're, they're clicking on all cylinders, they're a hard team to beat. And I look at teams like Miami, for example, right? And Chicago, and I'm like, Miami could fall in the standings this year. I mean, yeah, I, I, I look at their roster, I'm like, yeah, they had a lot of injuries last year, but it felt kind of like they were, they got kind of lucky at certain times. I get it, they have Nikola Jovic, right, and, and um, you know, they just signed Tyler Hero. I worry about the Kyle Lowry situation, right, like, oh, everyone says Kyle Lowry looks great, okay, well, we'll know when the regular season starts literally tomorrow, you know what I'm saying, it's just, I, I look at this team and I just think to myself, right, like, I just feel like the NBA is starting is gonna figure them out this year. That's that's the main problem I have with Miami is that teams are gonna figure them out. You know, we, we need we need to hope Duncan Robinson is back into you know the form he was in, you know, back when they gave him that max contract extension or a yeah, huge deal with, what was it, four years, seventy million? Like they have Max Struess who's very good at shooting threes, but you know, I, I just I look at a team like that and I'm just like, you know, I have a feeling teams have figured them out. You know, I, I just feel like if you can lock up Jimmy Butler, you know, that's that's half the battle right there. If, if you can stop Jimmy Butler, which I, I granted, I get it. He's arguably a top 10 player in the league every year, um, or at least the past couple years, right? But if you can just slow him down and stop him, which is saying a lot, that's hard to do. But if you can do it, you can beat Miami. Like, if, and I get it, Tyler Hero's going to start this year, I understand that, you know, but it's just when push comes to shove, man, I just, I don't know why, I just have a bad feeling about Miami, and I feel like Toronto's another team that people just every year have a tendency to just write off, and they're a team that could fuck around and get, you know, at, at max, I think, 55 wins, Right, but I definitely think 52, 53 wins, even 54 wins is definitely in the ballpark for them, and it, it just it saddens me because I love Toronto's uh, team. I, I love watching Scotty Barnes. I love Gary Trent Jr. I think he's a great young player. They have Fred Van Vliet. They have Pascal Siakam. Like they're not missing much, man. Like and not for nothing, but if Toronto, for whatever reason, were to get themselves another Kawhi Leonard-like player, or uh, you know, a Kevin Durant or something, which if OG Ananobi comes back, man, they're gonna mean business. And OG Ananobi, if OG Ananobi can just stay healthy for them, they're gonna be a problem. I'm just gonna let y'all know they're gonna be a fucking problem. And I just. I just think to myself, man, a lot of people are writing them off, and, you know, I, I, I understand maybe not a lot of people think that they're going to be a bad team, right, but I feel like a lot of people are just not giving them the respect they deserve, and I'm I'm excited to watch them this year, I'm really excited to see how much of a leap Scotty Barnes takes, because that's the real X factor in all of this, and I don't think people understand that, right, like, we saw year one of Scotty Barnes, right, and year one was basically 15 and a half points a game on four, you know, fi basically 50% from the field, 30% from three, and I think like 73% from the free throw line on seven and a half boards and three and a half assists, I mean, the kid could fuck around and score 18 a game if he can shoot 33, 34% from three and knock down 75% of his free throws, you're, you're, Toronto's gonna have a couple guys on their squad that could get some buckets, that's, that's all I'm saying, and, you know, I really think Scotty Barnes is the future for this team, I think every Raptors fan knows it, I think Scotty Barnes has the ability to be a superstar level player, like, I really think he has that type of talent, and I don't think people are respecting that, and, that's why I don't like the Toronto Raptors takes. That's why I don't like people saying, oh, Miami's going to be a better team than Toronto. Because I'm like, not for nothing, man. Like, yeah, you got Nikola Jovic, but this motherfucker, Scotty Barnes out of Florida State, is, uh, he, he looks like he, he's a fucking monster. I mean, he's, what, 6'8 with like a, a 7'2 or 7'4 wingspan or some shit? I mean, the kid's a freak. He's a physical freak. And... 
I just think to myself, people are just, everyone's like, Cade Cunningham, John Morant, and, you know, Evan Mobley and stuff. Nobody is saying anything about Scotty Barnes, any one rookie of the year last year. You know what I'm saying? That's just where I'm at. I'm just like, everybody's talking Cade Cunningham and Evan Mobley, but nobody ain't saying shit about Scotty Barnes, and Scotty Barnes is arguably the one who's probably going to have the greatest upside this year. So, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm ranting now, but it's just the idea. Watch out for the Raptors because they they play some physical basketball. They play defense. They play good team ball. They're good in transition, okay? Like, it's a Nick Nurse coach team, okay? They're, they're going to be good. And I just think to myself, man, a lot of a lot of people, even even net, the Nets, you know, like the Nets could get bounced. I mean, the Nets are a very volatile team. They could have a, you know, the Nets could be a top three seed in the East, or they could be like a bottom seed in the East, like you know, five through eight. Okay, so the Nets are in here, right? And Miami is also in here, and Toronto is like one of those teams that's like, yeah, they're here, but they could be up here. You know what I'm saying? So. Alright, I feel like I'm just blabbering now at this point. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like helps me out. Subscribe if you guys want to see more on the Fast Break Report. And um, out of this motherfucker. Peace, guys.